I've been using Linux for over five years as my main daily driver, and I've had some problems. And frankly, I really just wanted to get like DaVinci Resolve working on my Linux. I wanted to play every game that I love playing on Linux in a better state than it is in Windows. I've been told this fairy tale, and it's actually come true for me. But it was not all sunshine and rainbows, and I wanted to go over these problems and how I fix them and why I choose and use Linux the way I do so you have a better understanding of how Linux actually operates from a desktop perspective in a power user setting. Because a lot of times the lie we're told is just Linux just works right out of the box. You don't have to do anything. You just install it, go, and everything's great. And really, it's not that. It doesn't ever work that way. You got to kind of tinker a little bit, especially if you're a power user. So, you know, just to show this, my resolve now is working better than my Windows counterpart, but it didn't start out that way. When I look through these and I'm scrubbing my timelines and I'm making videos for YouTube and grabbing like all my waveforms, there's a lot of little nuances that I had to overcome to make this a possibility because this is really what I wanted uh, for the longest time in Linux and I have achieved it, but it didn't come easy. So let's talk about how I've broken Linux over the years, why my current configuration looks like this. It's using DWM, I'm using Xorg, I'm using an old, you know, not even pipe wire for my audio, it's all just ALSA with a little bit of pulse for some of my front end. And that's it. I don't use any desktop environment. It's just as bare bones as you can get in Linux. And honestly, it's almost like a server with a little bit of graphics, but I can play all my games, I can edit all my videos, and it's a fantastic experience. <laughs> and I like it way better than Mac and Windows. So looking at these problems, First one I had was on the desktop environment, usually people use KDE, which looks like this, or GNOME. Now, I tried these out and had a lot of success in the early times, but after a couple months or even, even a year, really, they would break. And how I would break KDE is usually just doing a big update. Going from KDE 5 to 6 was just awful. I, I don't know how any, anything better to say than that. It would flicker. I would run into capture problems from my screen. OBS would glitch out. There'd be a lot of different issues I'd have with KDE, uh, where in GNOME's instance, whenever I updated GNOME, well, it would break the extensions that I would use with GNOME. So it just wasn't a great experience. Now there's other desktop environments I could use and some settings, but in the end, a lot of times, I just like setting everything up in terminal. And I know that's like, oh my God, what the hell, Titus? Like when I set my resolution, I have some weird resolutions set here. I'm like doing a mirrored output with different refresh rates. I'm utilizing my display port and my HDMI port, but not a two monitor situation. I'm actually just mirroring them and grabbing them in, in from another PC. I'm usually just running a script on a startup to set whatever it is. Right now I'm using a clone setup. So if we cat clone, you can see it's just an XRandar script. So as I log in, it auto logs in and it runs this script every time I start my PC. It automatically sets my HDMI. It automatically sets my display port. Very old school, but again, it never changes and it always works. So that's why I use Xorg. That's why I don't use a desktop environment. My desktop environment, if you look at DWM, this is, you know, once you configure it once, you have these config files and it's a compiled C program. But once it makes this file right here, this DWM, that's 100 kilobytes. That's my whole system. That's that's everything. That's my what I use to display everything you see on the screen. Flipping between all this, well, it's all done with hotkeys and all of it is just a hundred kilobyte binary file that never changes until I change it and recompile it. That's kind of old school, but it works incredibly well. So that's why I have these two things. As far as audio issues, you know, I, I'm looking back through, like we already went over desktop environments, why it is, there's no reliance on any tool. Everything is done in terminal and coded to work one way, the way I want. And that's, how I have it set up. Now for the display rendering, again, when it comes to, you know, using the new Wayland standard, 
uh, resolve hates Wayland. <laughs> a lot of times I, I haven't had very much good, good things to go with that. And it works all, really only with AMD cards 100% of the time. A lot of NVIDIA users report problems with Wayland based systems. And you might be thinking, wait, Titus, in like Fedora and a lot of distributions shipping Wayland by default? Yes. And you're going to have problems. And that's where most of your problems are going to come from. <laughs> so I don't use it. I still use Xwork. I think that will get fixed one day, but that day is not today. And then for audio, uh, really, I only use Alsa, and that's mainly because of Resolve. So Resolve, whoever's doing Resolve at DaVinci, they use some very old stuff. And I think eventually they're going to update their stuff with Pipewire because Pipewire is a better standard, I think. But for now, I just kind of hard code everything to where I blacklist any device I'm not using that has an audio output. So when I pull up, let's say Pavu Control, you can see under my configuration, there's only one device. Now, if you don't want to do this whole configuration from terminal and just have that one device, what I would do is just launch Pavu Control and then just change this to off. And then that'll help isolate that down. So when you pull up like Zoom or something like that from your web browser, you're only going to see that one output. Funny enough, when it comes to Windows, I do the same thing. I go into like mmsys.cpl and disable every single audio device I'm not using, specifically HDMI devices I hate and I never use them. Or if I have a USB DAC like this system, I don't want my onboard audio ever showing up or getting used. So I make sure to disable that. Whether it's Windows or Mac or Linux, it's all the same for me because I disable those devices. So I blacklist them this method, and then I just usually delete whatever system or configuration is stock for Pulse Audio and then restart it. And that usually fixes all my issues. Now with Resolve itself, I was also having more audio issues. Getting rid of Pipewire, going back to just also was great. It fixed some of them. But the next thing I ran into is AAC by default is not supported in Linux or Resolve. So that meant a lot of my default recordings from OBS were done with an MP4 H.264 uh, encode with AAC. A lot of people run that configuration. Just know you're not going to be able to pull in your audio tracks that way. So I switched that encoder from AAC to Opus. And Opus was actually better quality. You could also do like a PCM 16 bit. It's a little bit bigger size, which I wanted to do more compressing. And since it gets really compressed here on YouTube, I thought Opus sounds better than AAC anyways. So to me, it was a win-win. So I switched from AAC to Opus on my records. And frankly, you don't have to, you could just feed this in like handbrake and then re-encode it into Opus from AAC if you wanted to go that route. You can keep your existing workflow. I just changed my whole workflow to record in Opus. So I never have to worry about it. But good to note for anybody coming over, if you're trying to encode stuff and you're having problems, changing this to Opus is probably what you want to do. And then not using Pipewire if you're using Resolve. And then comes the biggest thing I really didn't want to tell anybody, and that's simply... I had to kick AMD to the curb. I bought this card, the 7800 XT, and it was nothing but problems for me. I just could never get 100% utilization, whether it was Debian, Arch, it didn't matter, Fedora, right, Bazite, I've used a lot of different distributions on this, and I could just never really use this card because the open source drivers just never really caught up to it, and AMD I don't think was really that helpful, where I've always recommended AMD GPUs Ah, I hate to tell you all this, but I'm now an NVIDIA shill. I've gone to, from Team Red to Team Green, and I am now using an NVIDIA 4070 Super with NVIDIA DKMS drivers. Honestly, if I wasn't using a custom kernel, just installing the NVIDIA driver would have been just fine. You wouldn't have to even use the headers. But instead, I do use a custom kernel, and I do NVIDIA DKMS with Linux headers. Rebooted, slap that new card in, and on startup, it just worked. All my issues went away. When I'm gaming now, I get 100% utilization. It's fantastic. So this is my setup in 2024. The problems I've incurred, how I've overcome those problems, and just kind of wanted to share with everybody. I know this is not everybody's cup of tea, but I at least wanted to tackle this from a power user perspective so you can understand how I change things so I can be in Linux more and use them. 
And uh, as a power user, that that's fine. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get a ton of comments going, hey, I, I went to my grandpa's computer and I installed Linux Mint and he loves it because he only checks the browser and Linux is fantastic for that. 100% agree. But a lot of users use a lot more power user type things and it requires these problems and solutions that I personally like because once you set it up like this, you never have to worry about it breaking. And that's what I love the most about Linux is you can set it up to be an amazing system, but it does require a lot of knowledge and some tinkering really for a lot of power users. So that's where I'm gonna leave this video. Hopefully this helps people get like resolve working on their machine, understanding some of these compatibilities. It's not necessarily Linux's fault. It's not like designed this way. I'm just doing it from more of a server admin perspective and a power user perspective because this was what works best for me. And I wanted to show you those problems and the solutions to those problems that I've come up with. Let me know in the comments what your problems and solutions or maybe just problems are because I look forward to tackling more of these complex issues for many users. I know this video is not going to get very many views and that's okay. I really just want to help those users that are trying to transition from Windows to Linux that are power users because I feel like there's a huge market there that a lot of people will try Linux and then go, oh, I ran into this problem. It's There's no GUI there for it to get past this. I'm just hosed. So that's why I did all this documented on my website, christitis.com. If you want to you know, do any copy paste, like fixing uh, all sort of pipe wire, you can do that. So with that, have a good one. And I'll see you in the next one.